At a certain point throughout every single year, our most iconic wine brands, they go through, I guess, a release process of, of what they're doing in, in certain collections throughout the year. And recently, Penfolds have released their Australia collection. Now, I'm not sure if you've been paying attention, but Penfolds have been doing some really interesting things of late. For natty wine heads like us, Sometimes it's actually worth checking out some of these wines to see actually how they're improving and what they're doing. So uh, we reached out to Penfolds and they were kind enough to actually send us some of their wines to review. I'm not too sure whether that's a smart thing or not. So uh, I think it, in any instance, it's gonna be really interesting to see how the other guys see what the big end of town does when they really apply themselves to producing some of the best wines that Australia's seen. Keep in mind, these are, they're iconic for a reason. Uh, Penfolds certainly being if not the most iconic uh, brand, uh, wine brand to come out of Australia. So really excited to check out the Bin 311 Chardonnay, the Bin 389 uh, Cabernet Shiraz a la Baby Grange in many instances, and Bin 28 uh, Shiraz. So let's jump in straight away and check them out. Penfolds wine. I haven't drunk a bunch of these in a long time. I've had it like bad Chardonnays are generally like the stuff I really, really like. Actually, uh, like the Penfold Bin A Chardonnay just took out the best wine at the Adelaide Woods Wine Show, so. Now, my relationship with Penfolds, it seems like, I don't know, almost like the Holden of the Australian wine scene in the sense that they do some pretty high tier stuff, but also like some everyday drinkers. Well, this is red, so I'm expecting probably about 15% alcohol and a, a large slathering of oak. Oh yeah, right. Cool, we're going serious. Oh, that smells delightful. Oh gosh. It's one of those weird things, maybe it's just drummed into you, like this smells like fine wine. I some, I kind of remember this um, smelling more intense than this. This seems actually more restrained than, than what I actually originally thought it was. But it smells like really ripe and pruney and plummy. Definitely a bit cedary and cigar-y, like cassis and almost like a eucalypty thing. So it might be, might be a Cabernet. Yep. Yep, that's my dad's wine, all right. Uh, yeah, so that's sort of like uh, big dark red fruit, slightly bitter on the front of the palate, goes through quite nicely. It's a remarkable wine, but you know, it is also pretty ballsy, so I, I probably would want to at least be sharing this with a human. This is definitely not built for consumption alone. I wouldn't recommend that. Like stewed strawberries and plums and figs and prunes and all of that kind of thing going on. There's a nice, yeah, nice tertiary tobacco-y thing going on and a really good structure. Um, if you want a Cabernet in this style, this is exactly, it is a perfect example of it and you can sell this and it will be great in 15 years. It will be absolutely delicious. So if you're into this style of wine, bang, you've got a bargain here. Right, wine number two. This is not a Shiraz or a Cabernet or a Malbec. I'm pretty confident that this is gonna be a Chardonnay. Shit, okay, yeah, wow. That is a lot more restrained than I've actually seen it in the past before, or any other Chardonnay that's come out of um, uh, Penfolds. These are remarkably restrained. That's um, that's incredible. Nectarine, white peach, very fleshy. Just love the use of good old money oak. Like that good, expensive, high quality oak that makes wine really, really good. Yep, it tastes like uh, melted butter and uh, lemon. Not too much to say about that. Um, it's actually really impressive, I think, because I don't believe this is their top tier uh, Chardonnay. So it, it apparently does get better than this, but this is a big departure of what I usually consider to be a Penfold Chardonnay. Um, pretty cool, pretty cool. Nutty, almondy, savory, lazy. It ticks all of the boxes. Yeah, again, the acidity is a bit disjointed and probably Probably not natural, but over time that would integrate really well into the wine. But yeah, that is the only thing I could sing it for is that the acidity is not as balanced in a part of the wine as it could be. Uh, but that will change and adapt over many, many years and be totally fine. But right now, I drink the shit out of that. There's no doubt about it. Move on to the last wine. Um, another red wine, very deep, very dark. Intensely blackberry and prune and super rich, super dense. It's gotta be Shiraz. So I'd say that first that first wine must have been bin 389 because uh, this is Shiraz and there is no two ways around that. It smells like plums. I think I'm gonna like this one even more than the first one. This smells fantastic. Very blue fruited and it has shrouded this, this intense amount of oak incredibly well. Like the oak doesn't sit out 
it sits very well integrated with it. Man, that is that is powerful. Yeah, yum. Cool. All right. Definitely my favorite out of the three, this last one. What can I say about it? Even like the viscosity of it, like you don't know where you're sitting, but I can literally see it running down the glass here. Like it's sticking around a little bit. There's quite a bit to this, uh, the <laughs> thickness of this wine. It's a big wine. It's going to be a lot of work to get through. Look, the first wine I adored. I think it was all class. I think that was, that was just really well pieced together. Second wine, stratospherically good. This wine, I've got to be honest, I'm going to struggle with. And that's, I think, a personal thing. This is the best word I think you could describe for this wine is hedonistic. It's just, it's true to style. It's true to form. It's true to what the uh, kind of the Australian market is really looking for and what people identify with as Australian wines. It lacks a bit of interest and excitement, but that will come over time. And that's what these wines are made for, is for cellaring and ageability and stuff like that. Um, and, and I can completely see the potential of this wine to be absolutely astounding. Which, look, I am definitely not Penfold's target audience. Uh, I'm soft boy, new age wine drinker. These are very much so your old world sort of wine. Oh, not old world, old style, like your dad's wine sort of thing. But I'm going to say they're looking pretty tasty. Except I don't like the Chardonnay that much. But that's fine. Anyway, Lockie's not going to use any of this. We'll get someone else in. Uh, all right. Uh, one of the smaller tastings that we've we've done here, um, but I was I got to say I was personally surprised uh, myself with the quality of some of these. What did you guys think? I actually agree. These are wines that I'm happy to say this. I would never buy. I just wouldn't buy. But now I'm a bit more inclined to with a few of these particularly. I'd be like, I'd, I'd actually buy that at this good price. You remember when I uh, first met you guys and I was like, I don't really drink wine. These are the wines that I was drinking at that stage because like this is just the most classic like my dad's like lineup of wine. I don't dis, like they're cool. I get it. Like they're great now. And some of them, especially having drunk a few more wines with you guys and understanding a few more things. There are parts of these that I really enjoy, but for a really long time, I thought this was what red wine was and that is what white wine is. Well, let's take it from the top. Wine number one, uh, where, where were we at with wine number one? I actually really liked it. Like, I thought this was a really solid little wine. Um, and it's exactly what you want it to be. It is a high quality uh, Cabernet Shiraz. It is like got this, it's got pure Cabernet. It's got the, uh, the back and like, like grunt from Shiraz. And it's really tasty. The tannin's really good. It would age fantastically well. And it's still a delight to drink now. I was actually really into this. The texture of the tannin on this is just remarkable. I was I was really quite taken with this. It's, it's what I look for with really sort of well-made red wine. It's hard to be able to achieve that. And it was stitched together. Like all of these wines have been stitched together, almost like finely tailored. Like they've had an entire team of yeah. winemakers pouring over these wines, making sure that they're... And, and you can definitely taste that. And I don't like... It's, an, it's easy to sting because it's like, oh, this is just, you know, winemaking by numbers and all that kind of thing. But then you look at the results, like, yeah, but this is winemaking by numbers when the numbers are really fucking good. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, moving on to a wine that actually has a lot more restraint than, than the first wine. What were your thoughts on that? I loved it. I love, I, I, I mean, this, it's, it's Chardonnay. You know, like it is so perfectly oaked and like the acid's great and the structure of it's great and the batonage is great. It is, that's a good thing. Like everyone says Chardonnay is the winemaker's wine because you can tailor it and mold it perfectly. And if you've got the best kit in the world, of course you're gonna make yeah. an absolutely amazing you have Chardonnay. You money. <laughs> yeah, it's like you can smell the money on the nose with that oak and it's great. It's so much more restrained than Chardonnays I've had from Penfold in the past. That's, I, I noted that too. I was like, uh, it's good to see them tailor back from the really intense, buttery, oily, flabby. Like, yeah. Tropical. Thing. Yeah, like the American influence. This one has a bit more of that Burgundian, almost like Chablis esque style winemaking behind it, which I am all fucking here. Yeah, if you were like, that's, that's a uh, Grand Cru Chablis from a really ripe vintage. I'd be like, Fuck. Yeah, probably all right. New Oak and yeah. Chablis now. That's yeah, great. Money. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't have the back palette of experience of what Penfold Chardonnay has been like previously, but I do agree with you in the sense that what I was trying to say before is it is all really, you say restrained, I say like, yeah, none of them are really standing out as like, mm. oh, because it, my experience with tasting Chardonnays on the show is quite often that it will be like, here's a really woody Chardonnay. Mm. Here's a really buttery Chardonnay. Mm. This has all of the elements None of them really stand out, but I don't really like any of the elements, but it is really well balanced. Like, it's just not for me. Yeah, like, you guys are loving it and I can completely well, understand how, how why. Much, how much do you reckon it would set you back? 30 bucks. Like $90, like, a, like up there. I, I'd be dropping around about 60 on that. And it is, how much is it? 
50 bucks. Yeah, okay. That's actually, I got some, like, that's exactly what you would want to pay. That's 50 retail. That's, that's, that's quite amazing. Now, the controversial one. I struggle with this, guys. I'll be up front. Uh, oh, it's, really? a, it's a big wine. It's a big wine, and uh, I'm not sure I could work my way through a wine that big. Soft brand for me, but this is my favorite of the three. <laughs> <laughs> is it because of the primary fruit? It's really yes. like crystal clear, yes. primary fruited. Yes, big time. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, I, I was looking at all of this through the lens of I'm at my dad's house drinking wine. And this is one of the ones where I'm like, oh, fruit. Oh, hey, big red wine. But the fruit in the first place was what, you're absolutely right, was the thing that grabbed me and I was like, this is cool, I'm into it. Um, the thing for me is that like, everybody knows here, I, I love Shiraz Syrah. I, I love good Shiraz Syrah, but this is just on the, on the boozy end of town and it's just big and dense and it's late in the night sort of red wine. Yeah, but there is there is some like light. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I don't know. It's just yeah. like, wow. Yeah, like I'm, I'm like, ready to go to sleep. Give me yeah, two that's like, yeah, it's like after dinner you finish the meal. It's like, yeah. oh, let's have another bottle before we go yeah, to bed. Yeah. Exactly, that's yeah. the one. This is hedonism. Yeah, it is intense. Um, would I buy it and drink it? Probably not. It's just not, that's the style of wine that does not do it for me but I can see the appeal. I can absolutely see why. And it's the wine that put, it's put this country on the map. 45 bucks? 40 bucks. 40 bucks. 40 dollars, that's pretty good. And I suppose in terms of being able to get, you know, because obviously Penfolds have multiple tiers of Shiraz, and this yeah. certainly is nowhere close to the bottom tier. It's definitely nowhere close to the top tier either. But in terms of mid-tier Syrah, um, from an iconic Australian producer, where you can actually experience this style for yourself, that is like absolutely typical. Yeah. It's, uh, that's exactly what it is. It is typical and it's typical done really, really well. That there is if you want to figure out what amazing tannin profile looks like and actually lay some bottles down. We've had some old 389, which has actually been really fantastic. But that, especially for, I know a lot of the guys on our Discord channel, I think you guys would absolutely go head over heels in love with that. You know, you don't want to leave yourselves inside a hole where you only taste wines from a particular ilk or a particular philosophy. I agree, yeah. Revisiting these things and seeing what these guys are doing, keep in mind, uh, if you if you were long time Wine for the People viewers and you saw what uh, uh, Marcel Custos, who used to be the head sommelier out at their, their McGill Estate restaurant, he brought onto the show one of the most amazing Pinot Noirs from the Adelaide Hills, I'm, I want to say it was 1995? I think it was 2005. Or oh, 2005. Um, uh, like 100% whole bunch, minimal sulfur handling, and this was Penfold. Natty Penny. Natty Penny. <laughs> <laughs> yes. nice, this is before it was cool. So what's probably most impressive about Penfolds is their ability to be able to honor, you know, their established customers, which is exactly what an established Penfolds customer mm -hmm. looks like, and really start to challenge you know, themselves to creating wines that are a lot more relevant. Well, this, this is the thing, like if you tasted that wine five years ago, it would have made a completely different way. That's being responsive to the market. Yeah. And that's what's really cool about a, a company like this. They're able to just go, you know what, buttery style Chardonnay, it's out the window. Let's try, do something cool. Can't believe that based on this tasting, I'm more of a traditional Penfold customer. Like that, that was the one that I liked the most out of those three. That's and that's funny. genuinely shocking. You probably recognized as well. Like you recognized yeah. it. Yeah. So uh, in saying that, are we going to start to see a Penny's pet nap? Are they going to, how, how far? <laughs> Wouldn't bro, that just be fantastic? Bro, oh my fucking god, <laughs> I'd buy the shit out of that. That'd be the funniest thing and the coolest thing in the world. <laughs> Method natural. Well, put in the comments below, guys, uh, what do you think Penfold should release next? Uh, what did you think of the tasting? Uh, did you want to hear more about this sort of stuff? Um, uh, we're obviously absolutely fascinated and thrilled with all aspects of wine, conventional, natural, or other. Uh, they, we're just honest with our opinions. Um, sometimes too honest. Sometimes too honest. <laughs> but I hope you guys have enjoyed. Uh, until then, we'll be here for the next one. I'm very keen to try it one day. Like, um, Dad's got some and, you know, I haven't done anything to get written out of the will yet, so hopefully I'll be able to try it one day. It'll be a pretty cool thing to try and grab. Mm. So, you, so you've not tried it before? No, no, no. I've done. I've had Wendery. I've had um, Bas like Rockford's Basket Press, but I haven't had Grange before now. Fuck. I feel like you need to do that. I think he needs to as well. We're going to eventually. We got a bottle of it. So. Serious? Yeah. What? We have Grange. How? We have Grange. <laughs> do you buy Grange for us? Lucky. Lucky. Lucky.